Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I'm doing the feminism book tag. Now I was tagged by Amanda over at the Naughty Librarian. She actually tagged me last month in March. Uh, she put this video up in celebration of International Women's Day, which happened on March 8th, I believe. So I'm a little late to the game because it is April, but I had some time so I figured I would um, sit down and do this tag finally. So thank you Amanda for tagging me. All of her information will be down below as well as the original creators video. Um, as you guys can tell I'm in a new filming location. I have reorganized my bookshelf. So if you didn't see on Instagram I posted it there and I'm in love so I decided to film over here today. Um, we'll see how the video quality is once I edit this I'm gonna, if I'm going to continue but for now this is where we're filming. This tag is short, it's only seven questions, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Question number one is name a book where female friendships are prioritized. For this one, I chose The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Anne Brashers. I read this a long time ago, um, and I don't really remember the book, but I do remember the movie, and it was centered around female friendships and this pair of blue jeans. So, um... It was really the only book that I could think of where the friendship was the priority and not the romance. So that's kind of sad, but I read a lot of YA and a lot of YA are filled with romance. So yeah, so I picked this one. Question two, name a book with feminist representation. I've had to try to say that like 10 times. Um, so I couldn't really, the, the only book, the first book that popped into my head is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bouchardust. I think that's how you say it. I read that one uh, earlier this year. I think I gave it three and a half out of five stars. It is a Snow White retelling um, and it does have a lot of feminist ideas um, interspersed without, throughout the book. Um, it largely focuses on the relationship between the stepmother and the um, stepchild and um, you know, it's it, it's it, that was refreshing to see. That was really refreshing to see. I, I liked the feminist take on the, the retelling of Snow White. Um, it was just lacking a little for me, but you know, if you like retellings and you like Snow White, I and you like character-driven stories, then I suggest you pick it up. Question three is to name a book where the author goes against woman or gender stereotypes. I have a few examples of this. Um, two of them are male authors, one is a female. So I want to talk about the female author first because this is the feminist book tag. And the book I want to talk about is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. The main character in this novel is Audrey Rose and she is this, like it's in like you know, during the time of Jack the Ripper, so women are supposed to be like prim and proper and they're supposed to behave a certain way and dress a certain way and do X, Y, and Z and she doesn't want to do that. She wants to um, be a medical examiner. Um, she's enamored by like the human body and how it works um, and she's she's being taught how to um, perform autopsies by her uncle um, unbeknownst to her father who has forbid her from hanging out with him because he doesn't believe that ladies should be doing things like that and during the time period ladies usually didn't do things like that so it was very um you know out of the norm but I loved her character I thought she was really really strong female and it was really cool that like during a time when it was frowned upon for her to be doing these things she didn't care and she did what she wanted and what she enjoyed so definitely um enjoyed that one I also want to mention Game of Thrones and by George R. R. Martin and I just want to talk about a character in this novel and that is Arya Stark. She's one of my favorite characters in the series and um, she doesn't act like the rest of the females in the series. She wants to wield a sword and battle and you know she's very strong-willed and she doesn't care that she's supposed to wear a dress and act a certain type of way. She does her own thing and be you know lives her own life and she is pretty kick-ass and I really really adore her so I, I had to mention her. Question 4. Name a book with a strong female lead and for this one I chose Anika? Amika? Can't remember the name of the girl from Warcross. The main, main character from Warcross. I cannot think of her name. I want to say Anika but that's because I was just talking about a girl named Anika yesterday. Uh, I will put a voiceover in here somewhere or flash it across the screen. Whatever her name is, the um, female lead 
the main character, female pro protagonist in Warcross. Um, I adored her. I loved her character. I thought she was so awesome. And she's a strong female. And that was really refreshing to see. Um, I could have done without the romance. I uh, don't think it added much. But really, really, really liked her as a character. Question five is to name your favorite female author. The first female author that popped into my head for this one was Sophie Gonzalez. Um, I buy anything she puts out. And I just adore her. Um, I even have some books by her pen name and, you know, just they're just cute, fluffy, chiclet romance books and I love them. Sure, I have other female authors, but that was the first one that popped in my head, so I just went with it. Question six, name a book with no romance. Uh, this is hard for me because even books that I pick up that aren't supposed to be romance focused still have some sort of love interest in them. I feel like authors just tend to add romance even when it's not necessary. Like I said, in Warcross it wasn't necessary and um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times I prefer that they don't have them if it's not the main focus. So it was hard for me to find a book that didn't have a romance or love interest in there at some point, but I did find one, and the, that is The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. Um, this is a mystery thriller with some magical elements mixed throughout it, some time travel elements, but this is about a serial killer and all of the girls that he killed. Um, so yeah, there's no romance. Nope. No romance. It's a really messed up book. And if you read it and you want to talk about it, just send me a message on Twitter or in the comments and I will talk about it with you because it is so strange and I didn't have anyone to talk about it with after I read it and I wish I did because I just needed to talk about it. And the final question is to name a book where the male character depends on the female character. And for that I chose A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. I just read this one in March and Jamie Watson relies very heavily on Charlotte Holmes in this book. It is a Sherlock Holmes gender bent retelling and it's great and you should pick it up if you have not. Um, but I adore this book and Jamie just followed her lead a lot of the time even if he didn't want to. Um, she knew what she was doing, very strong female character and she was pretty badass and highly recommend it. So. Those are my answers for the feminism book tag. Again, thank you to Amanda for tagging me. Sorry it took so long for me to get to it, but I'm so glad I did it. It was so much fun. I'm going to tag a couple of people. If you've already done it, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to tag Adrian from Share Inspire Journey Dream. I'm going to tag I'm going to tag Kelsey from Hardback Haven. Um I'm going to tag Mel from what is Mel's channel name? Oh my gosh, I can't think of what her channel name is. Anyway, I'm gonna all of their channels will be down below. I'm gonna tag those three. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.